when I started out, I was trying to do a kind of hybrid of still photography. That is to say, try to find a way to treat still photographs not as a slideshow in a film, but as something living and breathing, a representation of, of a reality that it may be long ago, but could come fully alive. You know, you're, you, you're influenced by the way, you know, somebody walks by you, the way a tree uh, spreads out, the way a thunderstorm clears, the way uh, a, a play unfolds or a painting. So the, the, the influences are many and diverse, and, you know, we're all the product of all the other influences we have, and I am no different. I live within an hour of Dartmouth, and it represents, of course, this great sort of gravitational force in the Upper Valley. And uh, we've availed ourselves of Dartmouth resources for many, many years. Um, they give us the privilege of scholars that, uh, and researchers, and that permits us to you know, bring the books back and return them. And so we feel so privileged to have this association with Dartmouth. Each generation has its own technological advances that they're certain are going to change everything. We will still rely on the people who learn how to tell stories. We may be able to use cameras that are this big and can fit in the palm of our hand or in our briefcases or our lapels, and we're doing that. But in the end, this, the films that we'll remember, the things that will endure, are the ones in which the age-old issues of story have been met and overcome. That we are just interested in telling good stories, and there are no ordinary lives, and that we are um, obligated as human beings to, to not just be addicted to the boldface names that populate our magazines and newspapers, but of the people across from us and the people that live next door to us and the person in the next office. It's just being drawn to those things that, that grab your heart as well as your head.